Today's episode one of my brand new weekly feature where I'm going to share with you my latest purchases from the perfume parlour. I've got a nine ball haul to go through with you today in this maiden episode so make yourself comfortable and let's find out what's good and what's not so good out of this little lot. Welcome to Mugs Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much for tuning in to this special Perfume Parlour episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is the first episode of my new weekly series that focuses on my latest perfume uh, purchases from the Perfume Parlour. I usually buy four or five bottles per week but because it's uh, coming up to Christmas I'll spoil you this one time in this first episode and uh, give you a whopping nine bottle haul in today's video. Before I begin this rundown, if you are interested in picking up a few bottles of these uh, to try out for yourself, then you can use my 10% discount code, uh, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you'll be asked to create a login uh, name and password. Uh, but once you've logged in and you've uh, selected your purchases, your discount will be automatically applied at the checkout. And as always guys, just a, a quick disclaimer, um, I'm not an employee, I don't work for the perfume parlour and this video is not sponsored by them in any way so all these opinions are, are my own and I, I actually bought all of these bottles with my own money. I do however receive a small commission for uh, recommending you to their website so just by clicking the link you'll save the 10% whilst supporting the channel and helping me to uh, create some more free, uh, free content going forwards. Okay, so let's have a look at what I've picked up this week and starting off with a clone of one of the most popular men's designer fragrances that you can buy and one, of, one that probably most of you have had in your collection at some, time, some point or you've had some kind of experience with it. Uh, the perfume parlour copy is called Cybersports Extreme for Men and the perfume parlour code is 0574. This is a clone of Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme and the top notes in this one are Cypress, Mint, Mandarin Orange and Sage. In the mid we've got Pepper and in the base there's Tonka Bean, Sandalwood, Cedar and Musk. Yeah, this is a fantastic versatile scent that you can wear all year round and for any occasion. It's a, a mass, mass appealing fresh fragrance with a tangy mandarin orange top and a smooth woody dry down. It's a massive compliment grabber and this perfume parlour version is very very accurate to the original. The extract spray uh, has great performance and I'd say it lasts as long as the original and projects just as well. Uh, this one keeps going out, of, out in and out of stock because I think it just gets high demand. Uh, so it's just a matter of logging into their website and kind of grabbing it whilst it's in, in stock. Uh, but it was in stock at the time of shooting this video. Okay, next up we have one called Sensible Elixir. And the perfume parlor code on that one is 1481. This one is a clone of the brand new Sauvage Elixir. The top notes are cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg and grapefruit. In the mid there's lavender and the base notes there's sandalwood, licorice, amber, Haitian vetiver and patchouli. Yeah, so just before I get into what this one smells like, I want to start by saying how close this perfume parlor clone is to the original. And right from the very first spray, it's there, just bang, uh, Sauvage Elixir with its unmistakable scent DNA. And I'd say that there's no way that anyone could tell the difference if you, like you couldn't tell that you weren't wearing the original when you're wearing this perfume parlor clone. Sauvage Elixir is a darker, more mature and more niche smelling version of Dior Sauvage. It's more resinous uh, with notes like licorice, vetiver and patchouli being amped up to produce a much dirtier and slightly more challenging scent profile. This is one that will be loved by anybody who's fairly deep into their fragrance journey and I personally think it's really good with a unique and interesting aroma. Uh, but don't think that you're going to get anything that smells like the other mass appealing and playful Dior uh, Sauvage flankers with this one uh, because this goes off in a very different direction. 
It's much more of a serious bad boy type fragrance, if I'm honest. And when I first tried this one and sampled it in the shop, I wasn't that keen on it. Uh, but since then, I've received a few carded samples and after a few uh, full wearings of it, it's really grown on me. It's not cheap though, and the original is around about £100 for a 60ml bottle size. So I'd highly recommend this perfume parlour version just to test it out for yourself and give it a few uh, full wearings because it is identical to the original at a fraction of the price. Sauvage Elixir isn't going to be for everyone, especially if you are if you're kind of expecting something that resembles the other flankers uh, in the Dior Sauvage line. But if you are bored with those flankers, maybe uh, this one might just scratch your itch. Okay, next up we have one that's called Saintly S, and the perfume parlor code on this one is Z1804. And this is a copy of By Killian's Angel's Share. The top notes in this are cognac, the middle notes are oak, tonka bean and cinnamon and the base notes are sandalwood, vanilla and praline. So unfortunately for me I'd already read and watched loads of reviews on this one uh, so I kind of knew what to expect before I bought it. This is a sweet gourmand fragrance which opens up with a slightly boozy spiced apple pie accord and the dry down is like a gorgeous sweet vanilla and praline combo. It reminds me a lot of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry and shares many of the same notes including cinnamon, tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood and it's laced with like a liquor note. This produces a warm and sweet dessert like smell with a touch of spiciness and a light booziness. It's a very addictive scent and once you spray it on your skin I guarantee that you won't be able to stop going in every two minutes for a, for a spray of this one. So this is one that I would highly recommend that you try out and it's a, a fraction of the price of the original. Yeah, the next one on this list, coming in at number four, uh, we have got Seant. It may be, it may be Saint. It might be a spelling mistake, but it's spelt Seant three, and the perfume parlor code on this one is one four seven seven. This one is a clone of Santal thirty three from the house of Le Labo. The top notes in this one are Virginia cedar and sandalwood. The mid notes are leather, papyrus, violet, and cardamom, and in the base there's iris and amber. This one is a super easy to wear, mass appealing, woody aromatic fragrance and possibly the most talked about scent from the whole Le Labo range. It's a unisex fragrance that I would say doesn't lean either feminine or masculine and it's the creamy sandalwood that's the star of the show in this one. There's also a light sprinkling of spice and a little bit of the powdery florals in the heart but it's just a super smooth and likeable scent that's ideal to wear casually through the day. This is possibly the most perfect office fragrance because it just gives off a very clean and natural aroma uh, but it's not one that's going to make you uh, sit up and go wow that's amazing uh, but having said that I reckon this is going to get you plenty of compliments throughout the day and I can't see how anyone could dislike anything that's in this one. I'd also say it's possibly the, the safest and most easy to wear fragrance in the whole uh, Le Labo lineup. The performance is excellent and this one will give you a solid 7 hours of longevity and it projects well enough to get you uh, noticed without choking anyone out. So yeah, if, if you just want a nice easy going everyday dumb reach fragrance, check this one out. That is Seant 31477 is the perfume parlor code on that one. Okay, the fifth one that I want to talk about today is another one from the house of La Labo um, and this is called Extra 13 and the perfume parlor code on this is 1086 and this is a clone of another 13 also from the house of La Labo. The top notes in this one is Amel Salicylet, I think I've said that right, uh, ISOE Super, in the mid we've got Ambergris and Musk and the base notes in this one are Pear and Ambret and Musk Mallow. Yeah, just like Santal 33, another 13 is again one that's not challenging in any way and totally easy to wear. But I'd say it's slightly less sweet and powdery than the Santal 33. And this is a touch more clean smelling and focuses more on white florals in the, in the middle of the fragrance. Both this one and the Santal 33 give off a clean fabric softener type smell uh, but this one is ever so slightly lighter with a, a bit more of a soapy vibe. 
it opens up fairly synthetic smelling uh, but it doesn't last long and then it develops into a fairly sweet musky dry down uh, that has a clean and very calm and relaxing scent profile neither this one or the santal 33 copy have a wow factor and i wouldn't wear either of them for a night out uh, but i'd say that this would be difficult to be if you just want uh, an everyday gentle fragrance that smells super clean like a pile of uh, newly tumbled dried clothes in a washing basket even though uh, they're both unisex uh, and don't lean, that, don't lean either feminine or masculine, I have a feeling that probably more women will enjoy these rather than guys. Uh, but just give them a try for yourself and see what you think. I think they're really nice. And at £9 for a 30ml bottle size like this, you can't, uh, you can't really go wrong with uh, just giving them a try and maybe give them three or four full wear and see what you think. Okay, next up we have another one which is an extract spray and this one goes by the name of Amazing Splendor and the perfume palette code is 1216 and this is a clone of Ochre de Desert by the House of Tower. Um, the, the top note in this one is patchouli, in the mid we've got ambergris and woody notes and in the base we've got amber. Yeah, so this one and all the other tower fragrances get lots of love in the fragrance community. So I thought I'll pick one of these up and, and see what it's like for myself. This particular scent is inspired by the Moroccan desert and it, it certainly has an, an exotic Arabian quality with the amber and the incense and the woody notes providing a rich and luxurious base. But there's also a large dose of patchouli, ambergris and spicy notes which bring, it brings like a resinous, almost medicinal smell to the blend and it reminds me a little bit of like a chest rub like Vicks Vapor Rub or like a eucalyptus type vibe. It's not uh, unpleasant but it's just something that I haven't really come across too often in fragrances before. It's very spicy and there's also a dry dustiness that lurks in the background. It definitely fulfills the brief of painting a picture of a dry and dusty desert and I don't think my niche fragrance senses are mature enough yet just to appreciate this one and it may just take uh, some time to kind of get to grips and get to understand what it's all about. But I've got to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of how this one smells uh, but I may revisit it um, in a few weeks or months and if I uh, change my opinions on it I'll uh, let you know in an upcoming future video. Okay, this next one, uh, second to last, is called Eminent Wood. And the perfume parlor code for this one is 0223. And this one is a clone of Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums. The top notes in this one are nutmeg, saffron, and lavender. The mid notes are agar wood or oud, uh, and the base notes are musk and patchouli. Yeah, Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums is one of the standout Oud fragrances on the market and gets lots of praise from fragrance reviewers and enthusiasts alike. It's uh, a sexy, dark and earthy fragrance with a touch of sweetness. It smells rich and luxurious with a mysterious Middle Eastern quality and many people describe it as more of a, a masculine version of Baccarat Rouge 540. There's deep resinous notes that smell a bit like burning rubber and also a medicinal element too that people say is like a sticking your head in a, in a bottle of aspirin but personally I don't think it's that bad. Um, Oh yes, I mean, don't get me wrong, this one is uh, a bit of a bad boy fragrance and it's not something that everyone's going to appreciate. Uh, but if you are into your darker resinous scents uh, with a niche quality, then I would say this one is a bit of a masterpiece. The original bottle will set you back £260 for a 100ml bottle size, so it is pricey. There is also a clone that you can buy called Oud for Glory, which you can pick up from Amazon for under £30, and that's almost a one-to-one -one replica of the original fragrance, which I am going to do a full review on in my 365 project. This perfume parlour copy again smells pretty much identical and it was £9 for, 30, for a 30ml size bottle so a great way to try it out over the festive period and see if you like it. I personally think it's great on a really cold day outdoors uh, and also maybe to wear dressed up for a night out at a casino or something like that but uh, I, I would never wear this to the office it's uh, a bit one of those powerhouse fragrance and uh, it may end up getting you fired. 
Okay, at number eight, we have got one that's called Direct Paradise Exceed. And the perfume parlor code on that one is 1721. This one is a copy of By Killian's Straight to Heaven Extreme. And the top notes in this one are Virginia Cedar, Patchouli and Jasmine. In the mid, there's Nutmeg, Amber and Musk. In the base notes, there's Dried Fruits and Vanilla. Yeah, so I've got a few perfume parlor clones of Killian fragrances, including Black Phantom, Intoxicated, uh, Vodka on the Rocks, and a couple of others. Uh, the Black Phantom in particular is literally awesome, and they, do, they also do a cracking job at replicating Intoxicated. But I've got to say, I'm not as impressed by this one as I am with those two that I've just mentioned. I've also given it a, a couple of wearings, but all I seem to get from it is just like a, a boozy rum note uh, and a bit of dried fruit in the opening. It does smell unique and interesting, uh, but then I seem to just go a bit nose blind to it uh, and I don't really get anything else unless I, I go directly to my skin where I first sprayed it. And then I just get this kind of faint fruity rum note. It might be one that uh, everyone else can smell around me, like a bit similar to ex the eccentric molly uh, the e eccentric molecule eccentric the eccentric molecules fragrance, where the the wearer doesn't pick up the wafts of it. Uh, but if that isn't the case, and it just goes straight to being a, a skin scent after two minutes, then it's pretty disappointing. Uh, but like, if anything else changes, and I give it a few more wearings, let it macerate for a, a month or so, and then uh, give it a few more wearings, and if it starts to perform a little bit better. I'll, uh, I'll update you in a, in a future video. Yeah, so going back to, to touch on something that I just mentioned there, um, all the perfume parlor clones, whether it be the extract sprays like this one or the, the standard bottles like this, they're always much better performing when you've let them, you, you put them on the shelves and you leave them there for three or four weeks and you'll find that once they've macerated on the shelves, um, they do smell much stronger and they perform much better. I think when the perfume parlor send them out, they've been recently like blended. So I think it's always best just to let them settle, uh, give them two or three weeks, and then they will start to really perform and, and, and they'll shine. Yeah, so the last one on this list goes by the name of Sovereign Agar, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0555. And this one is a clone of Creed's Royal Oud. The top notes in this one are lemon, pink pepper, and bergamot. In the mid, you've got cedar, galbanum, and angelic root and the base notes are Regal Indian Oud, we've got Sandalwood and Tonkin Musk. Yeah, so this is a really classy and refined gentleman's fragrance that opens up very bright with lemon, bergamot and pink pepper. And after a few minutes, I pick up on the Angelica in the heart of the fragrance, which produces a slightly greener chord, but everything's then just rounded off by the uh, creamy sandalwood, the musk and the oud, but I would say the oud in the base of this one is actually dialed right back so there's nothing animalic or pungent to worry about if you're not normally the uh, biggest fan of oud fragrances. This is one to wear dressed up for formal occasions or if you wear like a nice suit for your job. It smells very expensive and projects a serious and sophisticated scent character that smells mature without being old fashioned. I could see someone who's perhaps in their 30s or 40s wearing this one who's a really sharp dresser and a bit of a high flyer in his career. It's clean, crisp and masculine and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Chanel Platinum Egoist for the first hour or so but this is not this is not as loud and in your face as the Chanel and it's also a little bit more woody in the dry down. I really like this one and if you are looking for a Creed fragrance that's a serious alternative to Aventus, I'd recommend giving this one a try. It's easy to wear and it's a really enjoyable scent for the uh, cool month, cooler months of the year. Yeah, so out of this haul, I'd highly recommend the Chanel Allure, the uh, Sauvage Elixir, the Royal Oud and the Angel's Share Clones. They're all fantastic replicas of the original and these are the ones that I think uh, most of you guys out there are going to enjoy. The two Lalabos are lovely and clean scents but they are just everyday dumb reach uh, fragrances with uh, not much of a wow factor. 
The Tower Fragrance and the Oud for Greatness clones are going to be a little bit more challenging and the Straight to Heaven clone is the biggest di disappointment out of these nine fragrances in my opinion. But I got all nine of these uh, for less than £100 so you can afford to have one or two uh, in your haul that you're not particularly keen on. Yeah, so once again that's about it for this first episode in this new series of Perfume Parlour pickups. Uh, don't forget I'll be uh, back next week with another one. I've already ordered my next shopping spree to talk about in the next video so if you want to be notified when I upload it don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel. I've also now created a playlist of my previous perfume parlour videos so you can go and check them out now that they're all together in one place uh, and you can catch up with the ones that you've already missed uh, because we all love a bit of perfume parlour even if we pretend that we uh, only wear originals. The channel is now starting to grow steadily and it's great to see the same people posting today as what were posting when I first created when my first video, it was a dreadful top 10 list coming up to two years ago now. So thank you very much for sticking around and continuing to support the channel and hopefully 2022 is going to deliver some exciting new releases for us all to check out. So once again, thank you for tuning in to this first episode. Uh, stay safe keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.